We are going to get started. Here we go. CWC There's the countdown. Three, two, one. Tetris! I mean, Tetrio! Thumba doesn't abide those five. Ooh, I see an STSD oh. in the future. And that's what matters. Oh, 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 what is that? What is that? Set up the promo. Match point promo. Two to ten. And the miss drop at the start. Oh, that's not looking too great. Ah, oh, that's a quick elimination. And Abu with the first STPC of the night. And Dark yep, and there, off. yep, completes it. Yeah, going with that, uh, going with that crackle opener. Very good patience from Diao. Ooh, yeah, and Diao up. just tanks it. Kill confirmed, but. Ooh, but speaking of Diao, yeah, that's a huge spike. I mean, there's nothing wrong with continuation. And no, Ebu, not at all. And Ebu, oh, that is oh, so that was too greedy. No, I was gonna, I was gonna comment on that, but oh wait, Albatross is definitely a rarity. Yeah, in TWC, dude, this is a super major Diao. Yeah. This is like, we're 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 in for a bit of an interesting ride. That J is strong. Okay, recovered. But is that gonna be a oh, 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 just barely. It's like it's like Diao just threw it on the bone. It's like here you can live because I never saw ever get severely punished. So this is clearly Diao troll. This, this is a super major. You have 3k on the line. That's red yeah. money in the time of their lives, and Diao is just yeah. what is this? What does that mean to nothing? Why are you boomerang? Uh, what are you, huh? That doesn't mean to Interesting boomerang, and then that's a top out. I don't know what was going on there, Diao. What are you doing? Man, if I were in Diao's shoes, I would just, like, not give an opportunity to try and make a comeback. But here's Diao just kind of, like, okay. screwing around a little bit. Throwing them a bone. Yeah, really just saying, here, have some free games. But I'm gonna take the- I'm gonna take the match anyway. Alright. Alright. <sighs> Have it with a PC, and Diao is waiting. Just waiting. Oh, he's just, he's just, he's just, he's just match chatting. Oh my goodness. My goodness, man. What are you doing? Stop this. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is just not salt in the wound. This is just disrespect. As Diao over here is continuously ramping up damage over here. That quad, that there's so much damage. Did they, did they like, did they switch boards for a second? Like, are they, like, I are mean, the names wrong or something? Like, what, what is Ebu doing? Up to 26 back to back. What? And that doesn't kill? Ah, oh, Ebu, you're doing so good there. Ebu, no! What? Oh, that's, 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 oh, that's so unfair. Mr. Upsy Ellen's gonna have to take it. Match point to Diao. This is really all or nothing. For Ebu, it's now or never. Like, it has to do it. Oh, very good hand spike, very good start. Ebu is just playing fairly high. This is kind of scary. You yeah. don't need to wait any lots longer. Of, yeah, lots of quick pressure coming in from Diao here. Oh, Maybe too much. much. Yeah, that's gonna be too much for Diao to handle. For uh, Ebu to for handle. Ebu. Yeah. Yeah. Getting names mixed up right now. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's, and uh... that match goes to Diao. The next match will be Dormy versus Vince, but first, I think Edge has a bit of a word. We're already 25% of the way done, which is kind of crazy. I've been like, I've been so stressed trying to start this tournament, get it put together. The whole team has been, but the results have been amazing. It's I just want to thank all, absolutely worth it. All the viewers, the fans out here right now who are enjoying this this content and the tournament. Thank you so much for tuning in. It means a lot to the entire team. We've all been so hyped to see all the positive feedback and stuff like that. Flags and everything. So, <laughs> I have a really bad habit of that, but either way, let's well, take a look. Without further ado, let's take a the look. Screen you've all been waiting for. Dormy oh. versus Vince HD. All right. Let's get ourselves out of the way. All right. Match is starting. You know what time it is. Very good, very good overhang set up by Vince. Got decent damage. Dormy looking yeah. to take the Yeah, patient. look at this early aggression from Vince. Putting Dormy in the red. Yeah, but Dormy managed to yeah. escape from all of that, but Vince is just. Yeah, currently able to play around it. Definitely take it. 
platform. He's definitely taking his time here. Oh my Ooh. god. Maybe a little bit too much time? Dorm is just getting hit with non-stop pressure from Vince, but there's a nice counter. There's a nice spike there. Uh, Vince able to just neutralize it though, Ooh. no problem. Good T-spin triple from Dormy. Counting the four to get a Tetris. Or quad if you want to be pedantic. Just having to rely on all these back-to-back mid-games. And there's an, and then there's an all clear. Was that a continuation from Vince? Oh. And the DT? Whoa! Vince! It'll be fine, I think. Okay, set point for Vince. Dormy is still yep. trying her best with this MS2. Trying to make yeah, this work, but... Ooh. Whoa. No, that's not gonna be good enough. Vince is gonna take the first set. What a way to end the set. Vince with the double perfect clear. It's quick top outs, trying to prevent Dormy from like being able to do anything. Is that Hachi spin? From Dormy? This is Dormy's time to like take advantage of it, but I mean Yeah, Vince keeps misdropping. Like you kinda need a I'm sorry, what was that? What? Wait, what 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 did that That was it? That was it. I'm sorry. What, what? I wasn't paying attention. All right. <laughs> Vince? Oh, Vince. All right, all right, Vince. Okay. Oh, oh. I mean, Vince does have those up his sleeve, but not everything is like that, you know. Oh my God, Vince. Oh, oh drove me with the old miss drop. Oh. STC from Vince. That looks like Vince gonna have to miss drop that uh, PKI T spin, but while Thormy gets to run away with. Yeah, PC oh, loop. Okay. Yes. Okay, it keeps going. Is that gonna be enough? Oh, Dormy doesn't quite have the perfect clear. Well, it doesn't matter anyways. Yeah, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Dormy's gonna be able to take it. Definitely seems like Dormy's best chance is when Vince has a slight oh, mishap. But the oh, but that's like five. shoes! There it is. 10-4 to Vince. Match point. This is all or nothing for Dormy. Like, and it starts with a PC. Oh. That's not the best board state to be starting with. Yeah, they had the MS2 right. set up, but the Q the Yeah, the Q was does not kind at all. That's Ooh, gonna be huge, very punishing. Huge spike. It's very precarious for Dormy. It is very, very precarious. This is like this is absolutely terrifying. Oh my god, Vince trying to power stack through all of this, looking to find as many ways to secure this match to themselves. But Dormy is still holding on, but I don't think it's gonna last. Yeah, no, that's gonna be game. And Dormy, one of the EU's best Tetria players, is out of TWC. Up next is gonna be the match I'm looking forward to most: OSW versus Westel. But uh, but first, uh, we're going to be having a short intermission. Um, there's going to be a change of commentators. And we are back with the Tetrio World Championship. My name is Cabell, and I'm super, super happy to be here for the top 16. And I'm here with my co-commentator, Bad Goblin. What is up? I'm super stoked to be here for the round of 16. We have already had some absolutely wild matches, and it is only going to get better from here. And in fact, one of my personal favorite matches is up next. And speaking of the gameplay, we are going to be getting into it here with the first round of Westell versus OSW. Let's go. Attack and perhaps trying to stride in order to mitigate that. A big C-spin coming up from Westell though, right off the opener, but OSW is still alive even after Westell's PC here. Uh, not going to find the second in time, but building up instead for a very nice C-spin on Westell's side. Absolutely. Westell's decision making is nearly unrivaled and, and they're showing that they're still in this game regardless of how many mistakes they make. Uh, truly only the last line sense matters in the uh, in a game kinda like this. But speaking of line set, 16 spike from Westell, but OSW is still alive, going through this, trying to down second time, and barely making it out in time. Speaking of run, OSW starting to run away with this match, 8 back to back. OSW not going to allow this DPC looping to get in the way of taking rounds. Really, really doing a great job of handling the opener excellently. And right now, there's an insane amount of APM being transferred back and forth. 37 spike from Westell. Absolutely. Bad Goblin, what do you think is going to be the main deciding factor between these two players for who gets the edge in this game? 
honestly, I think the deciding factor is going to be nerves. These are two momentum-based players, and if they are keeping their cool and having a handle on the decisions and the placements that they're making, they can both absolutely go wild. But if they're playing shaky, the opponent is not going to let that slide, and that can make all the difference in a match like this, as we can see right there. In the canceling lines, though, seems like Westell's going to have to try to cancel an OSW's relentless oh assault here. Oh my god, he did it again. He built another TST tower and not going to get punished for that one but not putting too much damage with it either. And honestly, these players are sitting in a pretty even spot at the moment, but OSW has a great opportunity to build up some back to back here. Makes the team miss drop though, and that's going to bring any sending at all to a halt. Yeah, that is going to be 10-7 match point in set one. Mm hmm but it seems that OSW may have to return to a loss once more, but no finds an amazing combo out. But will it be enough to survive? OSW once again finding the combo there, bursting, going as fast as he can, and Westel unfortunately messes up the conversion there. Not going to be able to find the kill. Yeah, OSW's really fighting hard to hit this deuce here. Uh, but, especially with this MS2 here, but Westel goes for the PC, not going to get the second one due to an unfortunate misdrop, and OSW hitting the immediate punish, unable to catch Westel though, was strided out of the misdrop fix here. Yeah, but OSW greening a bit too much for this back-to-back -back is going to cost him set number one. Something I'm noticing immediately is that OSW is absolutely playing faster than in the first set. Now, we saw that 35 spike come out from Westall, and just as quickly, we saw it disappear. OSW has changed around his strategy, and now he is trying to maintain back-to-back -back rather than spiking, and so far, it's been going really well. Westall, unfortunately, making some rough misdrops. OSW, not in a great place to capitalize, still gets a multiplier, but Westall was able to wait it out and survive to another spike. We're going to have to see if they're going to fight for the offensive or continue to try and play safe. Oh, OSW definitely needs to play safe after this MS2 misdrop. Catastrophic on the board and they're- Absolutely, and hey, I know I'm one of them, and if you are in chat as one of them, you need to represent, you need to show your support for these players, and we know that OSW needs it now more than ever. Down 4-1 after some unfortunate misdrop. Wessel capitalizing on some rough stacking decision from OSW here, but OSW still keeping this back-to-back -back despite it all. Has to break it there on the down stack combo, and now it's Westell who's trying to send over so much pressure, but unfortunately not going to find the kill at that moment. Yeah, speaking of kill, Westall going for the kill with this 14 spike, OSW, very nice downside combo, but they're going to need another one if they want to live, and they're not able to find it in time. Uh, but speaking of cancelling, OSW going to need to do some cancelling from this huge 14 spike, 924 spike from Westell, and OSW's completely pushed to the top of the board. With These players are pretty evenly matched at the moment, the only difference is that Westall's yellow number is looking a lot smaller than OSW's, and that is 10 back-to-back, -back, so tough to deal with, 12, and the spikes just keep on coming, OSW looking like the inflation stat of the US government, how he's spiking right now, but Westall's survival, unrivaled at the moment, just keeping it cool, keeping it collected, not making a single misdrop, and in fact, oh, the the tower. Tower. Westall is ridiculous. Oh my god. Westell looking to send this player down to a fresh West Hell at the moment, and they are doing just that 9-3, a very different story from what we saw in match number one. And Westell looking to make it only one game away. OSW finds a miracle down stack, but even that is not enough to survive more than five PPS of pure back-to-back, -back, and it is 10-3. It is now or never for OSW. Can he do it? OSW doing the MS2, though. Going for the C-spin as fast as they can, 18 spike to Westall, but Westall has the cancel, able to bring it to a pretty even board save between both players. OSW does have a bit more garbage to capitalize on, but a misdrop means they're gonna have to stride real hard out of this. And Westall Try building up, you. going for a, a little bit of a little bit of upstack here. OSW still in a safe spot, trying to capitalize though. Yeah, and OSW having not the best stack, but staying alive in this match, but that is not enough to defeat a player like Westell, who's going to pour the pressure on much longer than you can outlast it. And that is Westell's win over OSW, proving that the run back is possible and the Westell has become the West W of the Tetra World Championships. There's so much on the line right now, and neither of these players can afford to make mistakes. That is why we see those cautious playstyles. That is why we see these weights to accept. That is why we see macro play playing such a key part in sets like these, and that is an amazing, amazing thing to see. But we'll see who the king of this match is gonna be. Firestorm seems to be going for it. A huge backpack 16, forces them on the defensive here. 
does have a combo to uh, to escape, but Firestorm push the top, canceling their back to back and their pressures. Fork is now on the offensive. Yeah, and hey, there we go. There's again the weight, and it is being put to great efficacy here. And what a rough eye miss drop. Oh, what huge six spin cancel from Firestorm. Players are really really good at timing, and what that means is that defense becomes so so crucial, and the defense against this PC looping is going to be really tough here. Still going with the loop, FS still surviving. Not broken yet, but FS going to need to find a way back in this match. The back-to-back -back is coming online, even if the PCs aren't. And FS still surviving, but no, FS still unfazed at the moment. Going to build up some back-to-back -back of their own, and again, looking for the C-spin there. Going to find it, but a little bit risky, forced to break back-to-back -back as a result. And they do even at the board here, and they bring it back to a pretty even spot. A 28 spike from Firestorm! But speaking of turn, it is definitely Firestorm's turn to adapt as they've been going back and forth because now Fortism is once again coming in with the DPC. This is Roblox doors with this opener gaming. It's this is not real bad going to not just say that. Anyway, speaking of uh, Unreal, it seems like Firestorm's Unreal GT Cannon sending out to Fortism, but Fort has a very nice cancel keeping them in the game. Man, I'm still reeling from that one. Oh my god. I'd like to give a disclaimer, I cleared that one with production beforehand, that was a legal phrase, and I will not be fired for it, at least I'm pretty sure. But hey, speaking of fired, Firestorm is firing off these insane attacks right now, 9 back to back, online immediately, 11 now, not being broken, and not being broken. Firestorm's definitely shaking in the boots here, they really really need some offensive pressure if they want to take it from Fort. Oh, but speaking of offensive pressure, seems like Fort's going to be putting on that pressure. Uh, unfortunately, breaking the back-to-back, -back, but seems to be starting to build it up pretty quickly right now. And seems like Firestorm's going to have to think about this attack. Back-to-back -back 8, seeing they're able to continue it into back-to-back -back 11. A huge STSD, very nice eye picks from Firestorm, wouldn't have spun otherwise. And Fort is going to be on the defensive still, even though Firestorm has broken their back-to-back -back at the moment. Yeah, but hey... Broken does not mean that it can never be fixed up, and this is a great chance to do some fixing, but unfortunately, going to need to fix that misdrop before they fix anything else. And that is going to be set number one in Fortism's favor. 11-5, a commanding lead going in to set number two. I will say, uh, from my call with uh, Firestorm before this match, they do have some copium coming to this match because they were working on a lot of schoolwork and have not been playing that much Tetrio. So, I um, mean, on the one hand, I absolutely respect and appreciate that. On the other hand, Fortison biked 12 kilometers <laughs> before playing this match. Fortison's uh, way to reach the top 8 is going to be playing Roblox, because apparently they just stopped playing in chat. Um, interesting play, but uh, we'll have to see how it works out for them. Firestorm TK versus Fort's PC going into the second one. Let's see if Fort can find the third for the DPC, and they do! They hit it! Firestorm at the top of the board. Needs to downstack here, finding a best way they can. But seven back to back and then a spike is going to be enough for Firestorm to answer back with a spike of their own. And that will mean that neither player has any amount of back to back going into the mid game here. We have a four coming online, but just as quickly disappeared through that misdrop. And now it is Firestorm once again on the defensive. Wow, but that eight combo will do wonders for a defense. And but a 20 combo for Fortism doing wonders. And there we go, the count to four coming out. And now Fort is all the way back down and has a great opportunity. But right as I and say that, GST the tower from Fire Service. Ridiculous. Oh my god. Fort still alive though, not able to punish. Back to back time six is online right now, and Firestorm stack is not the cleanest it's ever been. They do find a great combo out though, and that is going to be a great way for Firestorm to get back in and get the kill out. With some not on winning cuts that happened though, going for the second PC into third, not quite gonna find the third one, but Firestorm, Ooh, and I am loving this clean stacking coming out from Firestorm, so, so clean right now, opens up the well too, but for, but for responding in kind here, and that pushes Firestorm all the way up to the top, but not enough to break the back-to-back, -back. and that proved to be legal, and it is now match point. Firestorm definitely wants to close this out with this thick spin here, just need one more round to win this. Uh, but Fort's all clear, completely cancelled from Firestorm. Firestorm's sending over some ridiculous APM, but completely halted from this big misdrop. Finding a very, very nice downstack combo out, and sending over to Fort, who is in a pretty decent state to send back them. Yeah, Firestorm there managed to convert that washing machine back into the T-spin it had broken in the first place. Expert play, and now Fort is going to need to somehow break this fractal back-to-back. -back. The TSS coming out as well, 11 back-to-back. -back. 
for the 11th point, and Firestorm takes the second set, which means we will be going to a tiebreaker. Uh, Firestorm versus Fort in the final round here. This is going to decide it all right now. Absolutely speaking, getting started though. Firestorm getting started with his back-to-back -back seven, setting with a Fort. Seems like Firestorm is gonna be in the driver's seat as Fort is completely on the defensive. Firestorm's APM here. Firestorm continuing out the pressure. And it is going to be about who can press the advantage the most, who can actually develop a lead in the set. And it might be Firestorm with a 28 spike. Fort manages to find the down stack at the very top, but it's not going to be enough to survive the onslaught. Absolutely. And as a reminder, the loser of this is going to be out of the tournament. A lot of stakes are on the line, and who is going to win this? We're going to have to see here. Firestorm going with a nice TKI, stepping in the garbage. Uh, continuing some back-to-back -back 20, 40 some 22 spike, the Firestorm is a lot too much from the handle. And what was a leading Firestorm Saber has suddenly turned on its head and could be extended even further if they don't do something about this DPC coming in from Ford. Yeah, oh, huge Jack PC with the garbage from Fortism and Firestorm push the top. Why not out yet? Somehow staying alive against all odds to continue sending pressure back to Fortism. Back to back seven from Fortism here. Coming on real, real hard. But 16 spikes still has a lot of clean. Firestorm's garbage board reaching the top of the board. 10 back to back online. Another TSD quad there. 14 back to back. Truly, truly, the Beethoven of the back-to-back. -back. It may have been looking for the PC there, but not going to find anything except a whole board full of clean garbage, courtesy of one Fordism 2. They managed to cancel it out, and they're looking for the down stack here, not able to find the multiplier at that moment. And Fordism is starting to find some back-to-back -back on their side of the board. They are already at time seven, finds the TSS there to get the TSD off in the future, but Firestorm was again his defensive strategy, utilizing it to its fullest extent, and they managed to survive that amount of pressure, and now they are in the driver's seat of this round. Yeah, Fordism doing a very nice job of counseling though. Firestorm keeping up the back-to-back, -back. definitely do not want to break it, as Ford is at the top of the board, prime time to punish, but Fordism is barely able to stay alive with a huge cancel, but it is not enough for Firestorm's back-to-back -back 13. Absolutely, and Firestorm has clearly taken back the momentum. Fort had such a big lead going in, and this is going to be so rough. But Firestorm manages to survive even the two-line PC, and as I was saying, the momentum that they have gotten in this past comeback has been immense, and we can see that it is doing wonders for their APM right now, a 22 spike, eight back-to-back, -back, and they tie it up, 6-6. Six, six. And what they needed to tie up the game, uh, seems like it's PCO versus SDPC, and PCO is going to be landing first from Firestorm. Fortison going with a little bit of a combo down stack, very, very nice, sending it back to Firestorm who is at a pretty even board state for uh, both players. Really huge, speaking of huge, huge spike from Firestorm, 21 to Fortison, but Fort cancels almost all of it, and they are in the position to fight back right now. And hey, Fort right now getting an absolutely insane back-to-back -back chain off. It's at times nine already, and that's going to open up the well with a times 10, breaks it in a huge spike, but Firestorm had a huge spike of their own that they responded with, but unfortunately, yeah, they... both players that one really do reading for that back-to-back. -back. I'm wondering if we're gonna see a shift in play styles from the players as they continue into the game with a little bit more offense possibly. Speaking of offense though, PC from Fort, setting over to Firestorm, a lot of attack, and it seems like Firestorm has a huge down stack to Fort, but Fort able to cancel almost all of it. Bike stack their own Fortism going to push back against Firestorm's APM. Firestorm in the end, back to back five online, looking to find a little bit more attack, but unable to, and canceling out to save their board state for the moment. Uh, every round they inch closer towards the end of the game, and those matches are going to matter more for mental. But what really matters here is Fort's huge PC into the second, going looping with the DP, uh, sorry, the SDPC, hitting another one, going into DPC here, I believe. Uh, but unable to find the next PC, and Firestorm able to still stay alive, but just barely from Fort's relentless attacks. Speaking of that, though, Absolutely. it seems time is up, and Fort finds the punish with a back-to-back -back six, taking it to a very and nice we score. have hit our second nice of the night. And here we go. That nice is not so nice if you are Firestorm right now, because what that represents is Fortism only two points away from moving on to top eight without you. And Fort proving how badly they want to do just that with a huge spike that brings it to match point in Fortism's favor. Firestorm needs to find some kind of way out of this, whether that's setting more offense or more defense, they're just playing better. They have to find this right here and right now. This is their last chance. Fortism going for his huge C spin attack. Firestorm pushes up the top of the they don't have an IP! Fortism taking the game for the top 16. 
Petro World Championships. Fantastic yeah, gameplay from both players. It seems like uh, storms were in the forecast, but Forsum came prepared with an umbrella and with their bicycle, pedaling their way to victory. With that, I believe we will be going into a break. Next up will be Tagai and QMK. Good stuff, Firestorm. Good stuff, Ford. Thank you for playing. And well played, GG's Firestorm. Absolutely. And hey. All right. While it is the end of our comms block, we had an absolute blast. For all the nonsense I said, I would like to give some honorable mentions. I would like to give an honorable mention to crusading with all these imperial crosses. I'd like to give an honorable mention to the Picasso of the placements. Uh, I'd like to give an honorable mention to the Michelangelo of the misdrops. I'd like to give an honorable mention to uh, the misdrop could OS trouble you that we didn't even that set didn't go long enough that I got to use it, but you know. And of course, I'd like to give an honorable mention to the final line I didn't get to use, looking like Sesame Street Dracula, how they just keep counting to four. Anyways, uh, back to the uh, the transition we're supposed to be doing. Uh, back at Goblin and I, super happy to be here for TWC. I hope you all enjoyed it. We will be passing on the torch though to Azura and Quick and Smart for the uh, the next match after the break. But until then, uh, this is Cowbell signing out. Have a good night. Yeah, and and w like I mentioned earlier, if you look at Togaya's character, we're about to show you what they got that inspiration from. When I first saw it, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, they got it from this bug bunny picture. That was their inspiration. And it is one of the most badass things I've ever seen. And they showed it off with their gameplay tonight. But now I think maybe it's time that we start moving on to an interesting match that might be a complete opposite of what we were expecting, which is going to be Kabuzled Pie versus Blarg. Get ready for the next battle, folks. Oh, I'm ready. I am <laughs> You're so ready. ready. I'm ready. We're all <laughs> ready here. Blarg rushing forward. Cab with that anime all according to plans there. Man, Cab has his profile picture behind him like it's a stand, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see if we'll see if it gives them that boost they need. And with that, let's get started, folks. Final, final sets of top sixteen. Yeah. What an, yeah. What a set to end it. I will say these two again, amazing players. Yeah, with that, Blarg only two away from taking it here. Boozle does not care, gets the PC to start here. Sending Blarg up so high, they are able to downstack, still clean it through it, but the Boozle continuing with this onslaught of pressure, not stopping, Dots gets the back-to-back -back chain, now starting to try and do some ST, not able to continue it for very long. Great timing and survival on that, on his part there. And, oh, that misdrop on that JP's is really bad at the top, especially Blarg is going to take it to match point for this first set here. And, yeah, these players just don't show any signs of stopping here. Looks like Cab still waiting a little bit here, even 
well, Blarg is also sending off so much. Going to just be so efficient, and that's that first set complete. Blarg takes it. All right. Into the next game we go here. With Entry, the last one for top 16, if Blarg does get it. Yeah, it's time. If going into this first set now with some perfect clears. Blarg is going to send off all of that damage at the start here. Do with a super, super clean stack. Going to keep sending. The cab right now does have a clean board to make it out. It is just laying off of this garbage. Life is life depend on it because it really doesn't care. Blarg with that misdrop. Bad Blarg making a mistake and it cost them. And right now the Blizzard going for these PCs here. Sending Blarg to the top. The Blizzard still keeping it going here. Blarg barely surviving, but the Blizzard is not done. Let's hesitate for a moment. But Blarg is able to make it through. Going to start counter spiking with this conversion cap with the misdrop. But it's a really unfortunate. Blarg is completely fine. Going to send it all back. 29 there. They, they are not letting Kabuzo run away with that at the start. Both of them going for that PC. And Cav is surviving, but can he make it through is the question. And it looks like... Oh, yeah, what a donation! That was ridiculous, and now they're the ones with the back-to-back -back 11 here. Blarg the one on the defensive, trying to find a way to stop it, and they finally get it cleared. Blarg is being sent up pretty high this time around. He has to take a few skins. He doesn't have the opportunity to build anything of his own just yet. Cav has a lot of damage coming through here, and... Yes, yeah, so far... Uh, Bill, the only one to have the lead in this set, and I mean, with how they're playing so far, they're doing so well. And Mish dropping a lot less in the previous rounds. It looked like they were able to fix that shakiness, and right now they're showing it playing so well. They do destroy their board a little bit, trying to maintain their back to back, but get it into the C spin. Perfect, well combo. What is that? What is going on? And yeah, looks like Cap builds up the Imperial Cross now. But Blarg is going to have the clean garbage here to take advantage. Gets the counter spike here. Cad fighting for his life right now, trying to just speed up and use up all this clean garbage. But Blarg not going to give Cad the chance at the top. Wow. <laughs> I mean, wow indeed. Blarg took advantage there. So nice players. I mean, both of these players, they, they pressure at the right moments and get those kills. And right now, speaking of pressure, you can see Kabuzo going for it. 5.7 PPS right now, still going 300 APM. Blarg trying to find a down stack. Kabuzo does break out of it with a mish drop there and gives Blarg the opportunity to live here. And now it might be Blarg's chance to try and pressure here. Yeah, absolutely. I've had a great donation going there. Going just keeps taking those donations. Really, really efficient. Blarg right now is just having to deal with it. Is able to, and just, yeah, not able to build up a backpack right now. Cab is keeping Blarg pressured, which is not something you hear very often. It feels like right now, Blarg is just trying to play for his life. But yeah, it's, it's the roles are reversed. I mean, the blue is still going at 4.5 PPS here. Finally getting sent some cheese at this point as Blarg starts to get their back-to-back -back going for the first time this game. And, and they might get the kill. Do not. Those are barely surviving now. Blarg dealing with some cheese on their board. Forced to downstack out of it. And this might be Bulls with opportunity to build another back-to-back -back chain. Looks like they choose not to continue it to try and get down a little bit, but they followed up with such a nice spike there. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Looks like Cav has a cut copy now to try to protect himself here. Blarg is going to have some clean garbage there to work with after waiting a little bit. Accepts, has to accept all of that from Cap and that little bit of extra pressure. Blarg has the protection there, just barely, barely able to close it out. Cap is trying to speed up, trying to pressure and take it, and he does. What? I'm have... sorry, that was 240 APM for 4.3 PPS for like a minute and a half by Kabuzo. That's the type of wins you need there. Now, Blarg, they do send a massive yeah, spike and Kabuzo with the high miss drop there. Does fix it, still trying to find a down stack though. Blarg is going to be able to start pressuring now. Starts counter spike this 14, but Cab is able to barely stay alive. Barely has the opportunity to get the oh, type of the the oh, 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 o
That was crazy survival by Cab. I thought they had the out of it. Unfortunately, holding there did cost them. And now it's again tied right back up here. Kabuzo starting the round with the PC. Not able to get the second one. And Guard makes it down to the bottom of their board. Looks like they're just trying to time here. Kabuzo's pressure at this point. And now both of them sitting at the bottom. Kabuzo, he does have that back-to-back -back chain that he wants to try and continue here as Guard just trying to downside through that pressure. Yeah, Blarg is not able to downstack that time, has it up and well, and just can't get down in time. Cab taking the lead this far into the set, on the verge of hitting that tiebreaker. Blarg isn't too far behind, of course, is going to be able to wait on that, that C-spin opener. Gets a really quick bit of damage in and is going to tie it up again. Oh my yeah, god, I don't, I, don't, I don't think a single set has gone to this even. So far, both of these playing is playing so well. Kabuzo trying to get that opener win in the books, but Blarg not letting him find a downside just in time to get through it. Kabuzo does have that miss up there. Trying to find a downside now. Not able to. Blarg taking their first lead of the set at match point. Kabuzo needing to win two in a row here if they want any opportunity to make top eight. This is such a scary spot to be in. You're, you've made it this far, but... Blarg can just take one more game here, tries for the DPC tab, is able to keep it going for a fairly long time, but isn't able to close it out, and now Blarg is sending it so much, Cab needs to survive here. Like his life depends on it, and it's Tries to place the LP some time, but it does not work out, and with that, Blarg takes it. Moving on to top 8.